So as we look at um, power series and how we can take uh, non-exponential functions and write them, uh, write polynomial approximations and uh, also write them as power series, um, I just wanted to you know, remind you of the, the three uh, functions um, that non-polynomial functions that are uh, that are very common uh, and that you'll see time and time again and those are the um, those are those are the functions um, e to the x and sine of x and cosine of x so uh, when we're talking about e to the x we're talking about uh, n from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial so there's the, the, the power series for that non-polynomial function. Uh, sine of x is, is the odds. So we're talking about um, um, a series of uh, minus 1 to the n x to the 2n plus 1 <clears throat> over 2n plus 1 factorial. Um, so sine of x are those odd powers and odd factorials and then the cosine of x are the even powers and the even factorials. And so um, this one is minus 1 to the n x to the 2n over 2n factorial. And so um, and so each one of these things has, um, you know, the, this is a non-polynomial function. This is a power series Um, representation of that function where we can get a polynomial approximation so we can get a polynomial approximation here um, if we want to write it in polynomial form um, but all of these you know they, they start at n equals zero and go to infinity um, and they have a that that definite characteristic of being geometric in nature and so um, and that being the case, then, um, when we talk about finding a sum of the series, we talk about this generic expression, uh, a over 1 minus r. And so, um, so when we talk about that, we can say, then, if we take a look at these, um, these expressions, that um, we can rewrite the sum, which is basically right here. I mean, this is basically the, the sum of the uh, the series so if you wanna if you want to express e squared as a polynomial approximation then you can just put in two here and express it out to however many terms you want um, so this represents the sum just like this represents a sum so when we talk about power series and how close they are to geometric um, being geometric um, we can express that sum in a geometric fashion. And so when we look at those um, functions, um, you know, the, these are, uh, you know, the, these functions are written in this form, but when we look at this form of a function, for instance, um, a number over one minus some sort of common ratio uh, in function form, then we get these, which are also non-polynomial, um, but they are definitely geometric in, ma in nature. Uh, they are definitely functions or asymptotic in nature. Um, and so we can then come up with a power series representation of this non-polynomial um, uh, this non-polynomial function based on getting it into this form. Uh, and so if we can come up with a power series representation, then we can come up with a uh, polynomial approximation as well. So when we look at this, um, and, and knowing what we know about the sum of a geometric series, we know that this has to be a, um, you know, we're, we're talking about the value a there, so that has to be um, a constant. <coughs> Um, so we're looking for a constant there. Uh, we know we need the one there. We know we need the minus there. That's basic, you know. That's basic, the basic format of a of the sum of a geometric series. Um, and then this is our common ratio.
Uh, and so those are the characteristics to, to rewrite these non-polynomial functions. In. So if we look at this first non-polynomial -poly function, we have a constant here. The constant is a value of 1. Uh, we have the 1 minus here, which we need that formatting. Um, and then um, the common ratio is x. So the common ratio, I'll call that CR, uh, equals x. And so we can write this then as a power series uh, with an a equal to 1 and an r equal to x. And we know the geometric power series looks like um, a x to the n. And so we're looking at this power series as being uh, as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 times x to the n. Or more likely, you'll just see it as x to the n. And so, um, so that, um, you know, that, that, that's a power series that represents um, this non-polynomial function, which means, um, you know, if we would expand this, um, x to the 0 is 1, <clears throat> x to the first power is x, x to the second power is x squared, x to the third power is x cubed, um, etc. So we can come up with the a polynomial approximation. We can come up with a polynomial approximation for this non-polynomial equation. So if we would then um, Go ahead and graph that on our graphing calculator. Um, we're looking at, uh, we'll graph the non-polynomial here, 1 divided by the quantity 1 minus x. Um, and we'll graph that in a kind of a heavier, um, heavier line. And then we'll go ahead and graph a polynomial approximation here, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth plus x to the fifth. Let's just see how that looks. And so if we, before I hit uh, graph here, I want to just kind of note that from a graphing standpoint, um, we have an asymptote at 1. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, and, uh, you know, with this polynomial approximation, it's not asymptotic, so you know it's not going to be a perfect match. Um, so if we go ahead and hit graph here, uh, we've got there's the non-polynomial function, and then there's our polynomial approximation. So we can see that this polynomial approximation follows that. And um, I just want to turn this off for a second, just so we can kind of see it there. So it's a third, or excuse me, I think we get a fifth degree polynomial. So we have that polynomial approximation good for, uh, for these values here. Um, if we would uh, make it an x to the sixth, so plus x to the sixth. Uh, and graph that. Plus x to the sixth. There we go. And graph that. Um, we would get. There we go. So if you notice, I'll go ahead and turn on the original non polynomial function now. Um, But if you notice that that non-polynomial function really is just following that, or the, excuse me, the approximation is really just following that part of the curve. Um, so, you know, if we talk about this polynomial approximation here, uh, if I can trace that real carefully, it's this part. 
So it's just following this part of the non-polynomial uh, expression. And so if we think about that then, um, in terms of a radius of convergence, we can see that for these values of n, and I think, uh, you know, so for, um, so for the purple, we had uh, all the way up to dot, 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 x to the sixth power. Um, if we just kind of trace the red in here, the red, we had this sort of thing. Uh, and that was a dot, 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 x to the fifth power. And so um, if we kind of think about that, there's an x to the sixth power. Um, in this form, we're only hugging this part of the, uh, the non-polynomial function, 1 over 1 minus x. So for these values, um, for these values out here, we never touch this part of the non-polynomial function. These are the values that are where n is greater than 1. Uh, we, never, we never are in that part of the, the graph. So we must not have convergence here. The interval of convergence must be back here for these values of n. So if we did a ratio test on this, um, uh, on that expression, take the limit of uh, as n goes to infinity of um, x to the n plus 1 over x to the n, um, and see where that's greater than 1, then uh, that's really the limit as n goes to infinity of x, right? We have one more power of x in the numerator. Uh, so we're talking about being trapped between negative 1 and 1, right? We have a center of 0 and uh, a radius of 1. So if we're on the number line for our, for our convergence number line, we have a center of 0 and a radius of 1 for our interval of convergence. Then we're out either out here at 1 or back here at negative 1. And so um, these are geometric power series. I want to highlight that because... Uh, we know that in a geometric series, we can't have an interval of convergence of equal to 1. So when we're in a geometric power series, we know that we do not have endpoints that are included um, because we cannot be equal to 1 at all, and these values will always make us equal to 1. So we know with our geometric power series that we don't even have to do endpoint tests. Um, we can just flat out say, once we have this interval here, we can flat out say it's just between minus 1 and 1 without the endpoints. Um, so, and we can see that graphically. We can see that we're approaching, we're matching up from this point to about this point. Uh, we're matching up there on, on the graph uh, with that non-polynomial function. So that's kind of a, also a reinforcing indication that this interval of convergence which is the interval where the graphs match up, um, is only from negative 1 to 1. Okay, so here's the kind of cool thing. We're going to stick with this, um, this non-polynomial function. So we're going to continue. We're going to continue to talk about this um, non-polynomial non function f of x equal to 1 over 1 minus x. But now we're going to center it at 4. And so centering it at 4 means instead of an x here, we have an x minus 4 here. And so really what that means, if we talk about this non-polynomial function here, if we have a center of 4, we are over here at 1, 2, 3, 4. We're centering it about that point here. And so if you notice, we're on this new portion um, of, that, uh, of the non-polynomial function. So we need a different polynomial. We can't stick with the same polynomial here because the same polynomial here only matched up at this portion of the function. So if I want to model this portion of the function, I have to pick a new center. So I'm going to pick a center at 4. And so what that means is that we have to rewrite this as x minus 4. Okay. But if we just throw a 4 in there, it changes what this is. We can't change it. It has to be mathematically equivalent to this function. Um, but, we, but we have to have this pattern of x minus the center here. 
So what did I really do to this fraction if I just throw brackets in here and put a minus 4 in? Well, if we look at this, this is really, um, this is really uh, 1 minus 1, 1 over, excuse me, 1 minus x plus 4. So I really added 4 to the denominator. And if I added 4 to the denominator, I better take away 4 from the denominator in order to keep the denominators original. So what I really need to do is I need to express this as 1 minus x minus 4 minus 4. Now if I look at this, it's really 1 minus x, 1 over 1 minus x plus 4 minus 4, which is just 1 over 1 minus x. So this is mathematically equivalent to the original one. So now I'm going to go ahead and rearrange this. So um, I'm going to combine the minus 4 and the 1. So I really have minus 3 minus x minus 4 in the denominator. Well, that's all fine. It's all mathematically equivalent, and it needs to be. But I need to have a 1 here so that I can follow the geometric format of a over 1 minus r. So I can't have a negative 3 here. So what I'm going to do then is, and the, and the key here is that r can be anything. So we can massage this algebraically until we get to this pattern here. So and I can't have a negative 3 here, so I'm going to have to divide by a negative 3 so I can get a 1 back there. And so when I divide by a negative 3, um, then I, if I'm, I'm going to take one third of the denominator. So I just divided by a negative 3. And then I have to divide the top by a negative 3. Um, and I'll write that like this, multiplying by a reciprocal. And so what does that get me algebraically now? It gets me negative 1 third over, now I have my 1 and I have my minus, and r is negative here. This, this whole thing is r. So on my r is x minus 4 over negative 3. Uh, and now I have the format. I have an a, which is a constant. I have 1 minus, and then I have this r. r can be anything. So I have this complicated thing that, that is r, which is fine. Um, so my, um, my uh, power series then looks like, uh, as n goes from 0 to infinity, uh, looks like minus 1 third times the quantity, um, or, or times r. And so that's uh, x minus 4 over negative 3 to the n power. And so, um, and so this is my power series. And so if we look at this, um, I can graph this. So let's go back over here and, uh, and graph that. Um, And just to kind of convince you that it's mathematically equivalent, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put back on the uh, 1 divided by the quantity 1 minus x, right? That was our original non-polynomial function. And then I'm going to go ahead and throw this on here. So I have uh, negative 1 divided by 3 divided by the quantity 1 minus the quantity. Um, 1 minus the quantity, I think I need a nested bracket here, x minus 4 bracket divided by negative 3, close that bracket. Okay, so let's, um, let's turn this off. Okay, let's just graph the original polynomial. So there's our original polynomial, looks just like what we had before. And now I'm going to go ahead and graph my equivalent polynomial centered at 4. And again, it's still a non it's not it's still a non excuse me, I said that wrong. It's not a polynomial, it's still a non uh, polynomial. It's a um, it's a, you know it's still mathematically equivalent to what we have here. Um, let me change that to a thick line. And so when I graph that, I have to turn it on. There we go. Uh, 
was wondering why it didn't graph when I graphed that. As you can see, it is exactly following the original polynomial. So I've just re-expressed it. I haven't changed it at all. So now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get turn turn off the original polynomial. So here's here's the rearranged form of the original uh, non-polynomial function. I keep calling it a polynomial. I apologize. It's not. Um, let's go ahead and get a polynomial approximation here. So we'll get the purple pen out and. What do we have here? When n equals 0, we have negative 1 third. And when n equals 1, we've got plus negative 1 third x, x minus 4 over negative 3. When, x equal, when n equals 2, we've got plus negative 1 third x minus 4. 4 over negative 3 squared. Um, I'm running out of space, so I'm going to come over here. When x equals 3, we got negative 1 third x minus 4 over negative 3 cubed. This gets really complicated to graph, but I'm going to go ahead and try to graph it just to show you that it ends up showing up right here. So this might take a little bit. Um, okay, so we have negative 1 third. Uh, plus negative one third times the quantity x minus four divided by negative three plus negative one third times the quantity. Okay, I'm right here. So negative one third times the quantity x minus Four squared. There we go. Divided by nine. I'm just going to go ahead and square the negative three and call it nine, just to make it a little simpler. Um, plus negative one third. So I'm right here now. Times the quantity x minus four cubed divided by. And I'm going to go ahead and cube negative uh, three, so it's negative twenty-seven. Um, okay, so when we graph this, as we can see, it's coming over here, and it's matching up with this portion of the graph. Now it should come up somewhere over there. There we go. It starts to, to spin up there. So as that is graphed, now um, we can see that changing the center to 4 gets us an polynomial approximation out here which means it's now out here somewhere. So we know it's centered at 4. And um, so 1, 2, 3, 4, we know it's centered at 4 here. There's our center. And again, we could do an interval of convergence on here and, and see where this interval of convergence is. In other words, what value of x is around 4 um, that, uh, that would match point for point, uh, value for value. And when you do that interval of convergence, you end up with an interval from uh, 1 to 7. So you end up with a radius equal to 3 um, for convergence. We won't, have, we won't go through that whole exercise here, though. Um, so as you can see, if we change the center, what we're doing is we're re-expressing the non-polynomial um, function. We're getting that power series, and the polynomial approximation just shifts over to a different part of the graph. We'll try one more at negative one. Um, just, just the math, not, not so much the, uh, the convergence uh, information. OK, now let's take a look at that last function, then, or that, that same function, um, one, minus, uh, 1 over 1 minus x. Uh, and we'll look at it centered at minus 1. So if it's centered at minus 1, then what we're looking at is we're looking at taking this and rewriting it so that we have 1 minus x minus, x minus is the standard form, it's going to be x minus a negative 1. In other words, it's going to be um, 1 over 1 minus x plus 1. So what did we do to the denominator to get the right form? Well, we ended up, if we simplify this, 
we ended up um, looking at uh, distributing the minus sign here, we really ended up subtracting uh, a 1. And so in order for, not, for us not to have a changed value here, if we really subtracted 1 in the denominator, we have to end up adding 1. So we have to end up putting another 1 out here to keep this mathematically um, uh, mathematically uh, equivalent to our original non-polynomial function. So what I really need is I really need 1 over 1, 1 over 1 minus x plus 1 plus 1. Okay, we, and so when we, put, when we put that negative sign through there, we really ended up subtracting 1. Okay, so now, now it's mathematically equivalent if we look at that, just to kind of show the mathematical equivalence. We have 1 minus x minus 1 plus 1. Uh, this is 0, so we just have our 1 over 1 minus x. Um, okay, so, <clears throat> so that kind of checks out that it's mathematically equal to the non-polynomial function that we started with. So simplifying this, we've got 1 plus 1 is 2. Um, so we're kind of going through the same steps here. We're adjusting the center. And then we're coming out here and dealing with this and making sure it's a 1. So right now we have a 2, so we're going to divide everything by 2. Okay, so go ahead and multiply by half up there. And so um, now we have up here, we have a half. We have 1 minus x plus 1 over 2. So that's our r value. So we have an a of 1 half, and we have an r of x plus 1 over 2. So we're looking at a power series then as n goes from 0 to infinity of uh, 1 half, a, you know, a r to the n. So we've got 1 half x plus 1 over 2 to the n. Um, so there's our power series. Um, and so we have a, a center of negative 1. Um, and um, and we could do a radius of convergence on this too, doing a uh, doing a ratio test there. Um, and uh, we would find that we have an interval of convergence um, from negative three to negative one. Excuse me, negative three to positive one. negative 3 to positive 1. So um, so we end up having a radius of 2 is what that boils down to um, when, we, when we do the, uh, the ratio test there on that. Um, and really, when you get to geometric power series, it's kind of a, when we get to a geometric power series, and this is only true for geometric power series, and we know it because we see this form of a r to the n. Um, we really can do the, ge the geometric series test. We can really say the absolute value of x plus 1 over 2 has got to be um, less than 1. That's, that's really the geometric series test. Um, and then we can, instead of the ratio test, uh, ratio test... Not really necessary. Ratio test will work for any power series, but um, but for the geometric power series, we can really just do the geometric series test. So multiplying by two, we can see that here's our center, negative one, because remember the x minus format has to be valid. So center negative one, radius equal to two. So that sets up our number line. Uh, with a center at negative 1. And if we have a radius of 2, then we're going to be out here at 1, and we're going to be back here at negative 3. Um, and again, since we're geometric in nature, we can't include those endpoints. Those endpoints would make this ratio equal to 1, uh, which is not valid for the geometric series test. This non-polynomial function we're going to center at negative 2. So looking at the original function, we'll try to do this in a little more compact manner. Uh, we're talking about x plus 2 in the brackets. 
right? Because if we have a center of negative 2 and we have to have this general form of a over 1 minus x minus the center, if the center is negative, that minus sign ends up being a positive. So, um, so what do we have to stick here? And, um, you know, right now we need it to be a 1. And we know this is a minus, and we know this has um, got to be a value as well. So, um, so what the way I like to start out by doing is just saying put the 5 here, put the 3 here, since that's what you see right here. We know we have a minus x, and we got it, but we also have a minus 2. Um, so we need to add 2. So that really makes this then 3 over 7 minus x minus 2. Um, and then from there, we need to um, from there we need to look at this and say, okay, well, this needs to be a 1. So we're going to have to divide by 7 here to get a 1. We can't subtract because then uh, we would mess up, you know, what's over here. Uh, we ha it has to be a division process, so we're going to have to divide that also by 7 and divide the top by 7 because if you divide the bottom by 7, you got to divide the top by 7 to keep the ratios the same. So we end up having um, 3 sevenths over 1 minus x minus 2 or 7. So there is uh, the equivalent... Um, non-polynomial function. We graph this, we graph this, they're going to land in the same spot on the graph and match up term for term. And um, and this one has a center of 2. And so as we write the, when we write this as a power series, a center of negative 2, excuse me. Um, and I have to come back and correct this because these both should be positive signs because this was a positive here. Um, so as we go from n equals 0 to infinity, uh, we're looking at 3 sevenths times x plus 2 over 7 to the n. So that's what our geometric power series looks like. And so um, that, being, uh, that being said, let's just do a quick geometric series test. Since we have a geometric power series, we don't have to do the ratio test. Uh, we're looking at x plus 2 over 7 less than 1. Uh, that leaves us with x plus 2 less than 7. So we have a center uh, equal to negative 2 and a radius equal to 7. So that's going to look like here's our negative 2 and if we have a radius of 7 we're out here at 5 and if we have a radius of 7 I need to make my number line longer. There we go. We have a radius of 7 that way. We're back here at negative none, 9. Geometric series never include endpoints. That's the nice thing about geometric power series. So our interval of convergence is from negative 9 to 5. Um, I didn't do the center of 0, but uh, we've done a couple of the center at 0, and we'll do some more. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. Okay, let's take a look at this non-polynomial function centered at 0. Um, I'm going to rewrite this one so that it's, you know, again, we've got that form of 1 minus, uh, it's not, excuse me, not 1, a minus 1 over r, a over 1 minus r, let's try to say that correctly, and um, so this, this is the common ratio, this is where we need to see the, uh, the um, variable x, so I'm just going to go ahead and flip-flop these and write this as 1 over minus 5 plus 2x. Okay, so we're centered at zero. In other words, it's a um, it's a Maclaurin polynomial. Um, this is already an exp in the in the expression for zero because we don't have an x minus anything here. Um, so we just need to get this uh, to be a value of one. So in order to get it to be a value of one, we divide by negative five. Notice every time we go after a value of one here, it's usually it's a division process, um, so that we don't mess up the format over here. Um, so dividing the bottom by negative 5, we're going to have to divide the top by negative 5. I'll write it like that. 
And so we have negative one fifth in the numerator, uh, one, and we get the minus sign from here. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the minus sign out there, two x over uh, five. So we have an a of minus one fifth, and we have an r of two x over five. And those are r's positive because we needed the minus sign to fit our geometric sum uh, expression. So, um, so our power series then looks like our geometric power series. And again, it's, it's a geometric series and it's a power series because we have uh, the variable x here. So here's my a and here's my r. And r is raised to the n power. So we have a geometric form. We have a variable x here. So we have to evaluate you know, what values of x make this converge. So when we plug in a value of x here to make it into a convergent uh, series, it becomes just a regular run-of-the-mill geometric series. So I'm going to kind of put a different spin on this. Um, I've, I've, we found our geometric power series, so here's our geometric power series. Okay. Um, let's and we could do the ratio test, but I'm just going to do the geometric series test to save time here since it is geometric. Uh, we know that the r has to be less than one, so that's uh, the absolute value two x over five is less than one. So multiplying both by five, it's two x uh, less than five. Um, <clears throat> and dividing by two, I guess I could have done that all in one step. Uh, it's the absolute value of x is less than 5 halves. So um, if we're looking at this, uh, we've got a radius of 0 and an interval of, uh, excuse me, we've got a center of 0 and a radius of 2 and a half, 5 halves, right? So uh, we're out here, 5 halves, and back here, 5 halves for our endpoints. Um, so we have a radius of minus 5 halves over 5 halves. Um, those values of x would give us a convergent series. So just to kind of say what if, what if uh, x equaled 2? Okay. Well, 2 is in the convergent um, interval. So if we put 2 here, then I would get a, my power series uh, would change into a regular geometric series. It would just be one-fifth times, two times two is four, one-fifth times four-fifths to the n. So a geometric power series really represents a family of geometric series. This part of the family converges. Um, the parts of the family that are beyond negative 5 halves and beyond positive 5 halves diverge. So, you know, at this point, if x is equal to 2, here's my geometric series. We know it's convergent. We can find its sum, right, a over 1 minus r. So we can find uh, negative 1 fifth over 1 minus 4 fifths. So that's negative 1 fifth over 1 fifth. So that sum is negative 1. Uh, what if x is a negative 3? Well, then we get the geometric series, 1, negative 1 fifth. Uh, coming back up here, we get uh, negative 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So we get negative 6 over 5. To the n. Okay, r is the absolute value of r is six fifths. Uh, that's bigger than one, so we know we have a divergent geometric series, so we don't sum it. Um, I guess we could say the sum is infinity because there, there is uh, it's an infinite sum as these terms get bigger and bigger and bigger, but we don't typically find a sum. Um, so you know that like. So we found a convergent um, geometric series that is part of this power series family. We found a divergent geometric series that is part of this power series family. 
So um, a power series really does represent a family of series. Part of the family converges and part of the family diverges. Um, for this example, we're going to go back to the original example. Um, we started out uh, with f of x equal to 1 over 1 minus x. Um, and we found out that that created a geometric power series of uh, 1 times x to the n. And that's not the only way we can, uh, we can figure these out. Um, since this is a division process, we can physically do uh, long division. And so if you remember how to do that, uh, it looks like this. The numerator is 1 plus 0x. I write it in polynomial form, plus 0x squared, plus 0x cubed, and so on. So um, if we look at 